Hello again. If you can hang in there for about 40 or 50 seconds, we'll get past the verse and get into the main part of the tune. Messing around with, uh, they can't take that away from me. I have kind of a dyslexia with song titles. Um, when I'm thinking of they can't take that away from me, sometimes I'll think of there will never be another you. I don't know if it's the T-H-E sound in the beginning of the title or if it's because they're both in the same key. Years ago, I was playing with a friend, David, and he would call Autumn Leaves, I'd start playing all the things you are. You know, he might call uh, Green Dolphin Street and I might start playing out of nowhere. It's just weird. I get, my titles get screwed up. But in any event, be that as it may, this is a 1937 tune by George and Ira Gershwin. Um, I was just reading this morning that uh, background on the tune. Gershwin had a total infatuation with uh, fashion model turned actress Paulette Goddard, who was a big uh, starlet back then. It was unrequited love. Turns out she was secretly married to Charlie Chaplin. So in 1937, uh, apparently this was kind of like an ode to uh, Paulette Goddard by George Gershwin. His brother Ira wrote the words. And a year later, George was dead. Uh, I think it was a brain tumor. Of course, back then, you know, there was a lot less they could do, but uh, kind of a sad story, but beautiful song. Um, let's just take a look. I had put uh, a tab um, out a couple of days ago. I'll give you a look at the tab uh, now. I know it's hard to follow. Um, I'm trying to learn how to do a PDF. I mean, I'm really out of it with technology. Yesterday, I was experimenting, trying to get, grab a photo and turn it into a PDF. I don't know if I did or I didn't. That's that's how numb I am when it comes to that stuff. But anyway, yeah, this is just a tab. Uh, hopefully you have it in a real book or a fake book or something. Um, I know it's on Alreal Pro, but of course that won't give you the melody. It'll give you the chord changes. Um, I tried to do some things in here that are not really in the standard chord changes as they appear on iReal Pro. So you may notice there's a little variation. Um, again, I think what I'll do is I'll get this, uh, you know, handwritten tab. I'll get it and I'll put it below this video on YouTube. I'll somehow find a way in my rudimentary fashion of getting it on there. So there at the very bottom, we're kind of going into the coda, the ending of the tune. Uh, so that's why I started using chord diagrams because there were some at the bottom of the page and I wanted to be sure I fit everything in. And then this is just the very, very end. This is page two of the uh, little arrangement I came up with. Uh, at one or two points in here, I kind of have now varied because I found something I think sounds better. But I definitely like throwing in this alternate ending, which is really just me going up kind of like E major, uh, E major seven, E major nine type inversions and then landing them way up high, but we'll get to that eventually. Okay, so again, here we go. Um, I'm not going to do the verse today because it's much less known, especially to people like me who never heard it before. That little... Uh, it's nice, but let's not bother with it right now. Let's go into trying to reproduce what I had on this tab here. We're going to start with a B-flat bass note, and we're going to have these notes. 
kind of like if you were down to first position, it's an A minor, sh a minor shape. Then we'll go to our stock fifth position root, E flat major seven. And then this is a nice thing I picked up somewhere. It's an F minor seven with B flat in the bass. And then you keep the bar and you add in a third finger bar on the second fret, which yields, what does that yield? That yields um, an F sharp minor six with B flat in the bass apparently. Okay, one more time from the top. This is just a common shape. I've got the G on the sixth string, I've got the E flat on the fourth, and I've got the B flat on the third. I'm blotting out the fifth string. This is just a diminished, barring strings two, three, and four at the fourth fret. I've got the ring finger on string three, and I've got the middle finger on string six. So it's going to be a lot of description, unfortunately. That's why I'm trying to let you see the, uh, the handwritten tab again from the top. E flat major 7, this little F minor 7, then this, this is actually an A, A diminished 7, okay, let me find where I am, yeah, now we go into T, okay, so it is helpful, it's a truism that you always hear that it's good to know the lyrics of a song you're working on, this starts out with the way you wear your hat the way you sip your tea, the memory of all that. So I guess Paulette wore hats, you know, everybody wore hats back then and I guess she liked her tea. Uh, anyway, the words can be a good cue. So we're gonna go and we're gonna use the words. The way you wear your hat. The way you sip your tea. Now on tea, we're gonna just play around and do something here with a walk, walk up. It's just fill in really. So when we get to the uh, lyric of T, what it is, it's, it's a B flat note over an F minor seven chord. So here's an F minor seven chord, but I'm gonna grab the B flat that's on the third string, third fret, and only pick that far. Play the G. Now we're gonna have, this is actually an inversion of the F minor. So we have F minor with the B flat melody on the third string bass note, inversion of the F minor, an A bass note, and then we're going to go right to this B flat 7, string 3, string 4, string 6. It's going to be slow going. Hopefully you have the um, self-discipline and determination I often lack <laughs> to try to just pick up on this. Here we go again. there. We already went through the walk up. Then what I do is, since it's nothing convenient to grab a chord here, I just do an octave. Okay, and then this is uh, the memory of all that. And when we get to that, it's an E flat major 7 again, but I'm barring the first five strings so that I can grab this B flat melody on the first note. And then this is nice. Uh, B flat 7 sharp 5 to an E flat 9 and then the C melody note here makes it into a 13 okay a lot of talking not much done here we go again flat 9. Now we're going to come up to the 11th fret and we've got this, you know, standard again, 5th string root, A flat major 7, but we're going to again bar with that first finger so that I can grab my first string note, which is E flat. Uh, sorry, E flat on the first string and then come back and play the second string. So what ends up happening is you get these notes. Can't take that away from me. Okay, A flat major seven. Sorry. 
Now we're going to go to this, which is really, it's an F minor 7, but I'm having the pinky on first. So it's... Now this is actually a C9. You know, this is, this is a C9, of course, but this is a, another C9 right here. If you put this on the third string. Now we're back to a regular F7. Now we're walking down to get to this little 9 in the bass. I like that sound. It's an A flat major 7 chord, but it's got a B flat in the bass. Okay, it feels like it's going to take about nine years to get through this, but here we go again from the top. Now, just for variety, this isn't on the tab. But you can just do this now for variety. F minor 7, F sharp minor 7, and then go into this same thing we did before. I'm going to keep using this because I like it. This is just like before. A flat major 7 all the way through the first string. Come back and play that pinky on the second string. Go down to this. Now we're going to go to a B flat 7 sus, B flat 13, E flat 6. Okay, that gives you the first two A sections and it kind of gives you most of the final A section or the C section, whatever you want to call it. One more time. Hang in there if you can. Second A section. Okay, now we're going to move into the B section. G octave, sorry, G octave, A octave. Now we've got, you may not be able to finger it this way, but covering those first two strings so you could you could think of it that way if you need to. So G minor 7 with the third B flat on top. Okay, so after we do G, A, play G note on the second string. Now we're going to come up, we're going to play not a C7, but a C9. Diminished with the pinky on C. Back to that original G minor 7. Back to the C9. This time we're going to switch to a D9. It's kind of cool. Um, and then we're going to do a little thing here. It's a G minor 7 chord. The melody is a sustained G note. Okay. So bear with me here. Middle section one more time. G octave up to A octave. G minor 7. C9. C diminished, back to G minus 7, C9, D9, okay, G minus 7, descending bass note on the 5th string, A7 sharp 5, D7, okay, one more time. from a D7 to also D7. The only thing that's changing is the bottom note. It turns into a D7 flat 5 with the A flat on the bottom. One more time. We're going to continue. B 
five seven sus to C seven F seven. Right here is where we go to the coda. It's going to be. I kind of found a new voicing, new to me, maybe not new to you. But I was trying to do an E flat six nine. So we all know this is E flat major seven with the root on the fifth string. Well, if you get rid of the pinky and bar, now you're playing the F, the nine on the second string right here. And if you throw the pinky on the first string C. That's an E flat six nine as near as I can tell. And then this is gonna be no, no, sorry. No, no, hey. Okay. And then we're in the coda. We're gonna do this thing again. A flat major seven all the way through to the first. Put the back and play the second string. The F minor seven thing. F flat seven sus four. Flat 13, C minor 7. Now to an A flat minor 6 with the 9, the B flat on top. Okay, and we're going to do barring the first three strings with the ring, and we're just playing this one note, E flat in the bass. up there. Uh, what else is new? Um, take it again from the middle section. Okay, we try that again. So now we're going to do, yeah, it's going to be the chord I just discussed. So what I'm doing is I'm borrowing the first five strings at the sixth fret. Pinky's on the eighth fret. Middle finger's on the third string, seventh fret. Ring finger's on the fourth string, eighth fret. It's kind of like an E flat six nine. Okay. Uh, no, no, they, and then this familiar thing, the A flat major seven. F minor 7, B flat 7 sus, B flat 13, C minor 7 only as far as the second string for that E flat melody. And we go to A flat minor 6th with the B flat melody. And then take it off. You could either do it this way, E flat major 7. This is a kind of a stacked fourth voicing for an A flat 6 9. Back to E flat major seven over here. Just for variety, this is a G minor seven, or you could do it that way. And then we go into an A flat six. A lot of what I'm doing here is in, in this chord, I'm not playing the fifth string. I'm plucking, I'm picking the sixth string with the pick, and I'm using my fingers to play the second, third, and fourth strings. This is an A flat six. Same thing here, this is a B flat 13. And now what I screwed up before was it kind of lands on an E flat 6. Go up a fourth to that A flat major 7. Uh, now we go down a whole step to D flat 6. Up a fourth to that um, G flat major 7. This is a B 6, I just have the second string open. So as you walk down, you know, you got this. It's an E flat six. Two, down two frets is a D flat six. But when you get down here, the second string is open. That's a B six going up to 
E major seven, and then we're gonna finish with this. If you don't know your inversions, this might help you a little bit. This is gonna be basically, it's an E, you know, E flat major seven is here. If I take that first string G and just plop it onto the sixth string instead, I wind up with this. Second string's here on D, third string is on the B flat, first finger's on the E flat, middle finger's on the G. Now here's what we're gonna do, we're gonna walk up. Um, this is an E flat nine. This is barring strings two, three, and four at the eighth fret, and I've got the D over here on the sixth. It's an inversion of an E flat major seven. Here's an E flat major seven that you probably know. And then last but not least, I'm gonna come up and I'm gonna play the one I started out with down here, an octave higher. If you want, you can go from the major seven up to the root. Yeah, so let me know if you have any questions. Again, I'm gonna to try to get uh, some representation of the handwritten tab down beneath this video. Um, if you find it interesting or fun or useful, uh, give me a like. Subscribe if you haven't, if you like this kind of stuff. I'm getting close, I think, to 400 videos. I've been doing this a few years. I'm trying to get the subscriber base up. It's been slow going. Um, my media goal right now is 800, uh, which sounds funny, but it's a small, small audience for this stuff. Uh, so you're actually one of the elite. You're one of the super tasteful people, super tasteful musicians, who uh, has, the, has the good sense to watch my amateurish videos. But anyway, I hope you enjoy it. I hope you like the tune. George Gershwin, Ira Gershwin wrote some great music. And I hope you have fun. Again, let me know if you have comments or questions. Appreciate you watching. Have a great day.